roku 1947 komunistyczny In 1947 the communist government in Warsaw decided to build a new city near Krakow. że wybuduje tuż obok Krakowa nowe miasto. The city would be called Nowa Huta and it would be the first city in the communist bloc without God. Pierwszym w obozie komunistycznym miastem bez Boga. These were supposed to be secular socialist cities, in which there would be theatres, cinemas, cultural centres, but no churches. Many young people went there to work. Most came from Polish villages. These were people raised as Catholics, torn out of their familiar setting. In the beginning they tasted this freedom, popular liberalism, everything that the authorities were promoting. In every corner there were many bars with vodka, shops with beer, and everyone was walking around drunk all the time. Boys would go around visiting girls, girls visited boys. There were many children born out of wedlock. There were ponds of burnt limestone because they were building using traditional methods. My friends who were workers said that every day they would pull wounded corpses out of these ponds. Different neighborhoods fought, one worker's brigade against another, and over ridiculous things, but the brigade was making false reports on imposed working norms. It slowly occurred to these people that they were missing something, that they had grown up with some tradition, and that this tradition was being somehow marginalized, outlawed by the authorities. This provoked social discontent, but the people's discontent was repressed during the Stalinist terror. In 1956, as a result of the so-called Polish October, the process of de-Stalinization, some changes in the leadership of the Communist Party took place. The new first secretary became Władysław Gomułka, who faced great pressure from the grassroots level to change the official policy toward the church, which had become symbolized by the imprisonment of Cardinal Wyszynski in 1953. The Catholic Church in Poland was the strongest in Central and Eastern Europe. The process of attacking the Church was therefore carried out progressively. From 1947, the authorities launched a hidden war to undermine the Church, which became an open conflict by 1950, effected through arresting bishops and priests, removing religious education from schools, closing down Catholic institutions, newspapers, etc. The peak of these policies came in 1953-56, to 56, after Cardinal Wyszynski was arrested. Gomułka, obviously a communist, was pressured to ease his policies toward the church. When the people stopped being scared, they made demands for things. They said, we want a church in Nowa Huta. They began protesting, but they did it by sticking a cross into the earth of Nowa Huta. Several thousand people came, then tens of thousands. Gomułka came to power. People went to see him in Warsaw to ask him for permission to build a church. And he agreed, but only verbally. He didn't give any formal written confirmation. Gomułka realized that liberalizing official policies toward the church would have to end. 
Latem 58 roku. In the summer of 1958, when he decided that the social situation had calmed down enough for the policies against the church to become more strict, the first attack came. They used massive repressive measures, such as the repossession of property from people who allegedly failed to pay taxes, and removing religious education from schools. At first, they decided that the square, which had been designated for the church, was not suitable because its ownership was unclear. This was, of course, a typical bureaucratic excuse. But they also began to question whether the church building committee had the legal right to collect public contributions. This was especially disconcerting for the authorities as people began to organize themselves under the leadership of priests and independently of the authorities to build churches. This was a clear threat. Finally, at one point, two million zloty were confiscated from the bank account by the authorities. Finally, they announced that the committee to build the church was illegal and that it must disband. And then they decided to simply remove the cross and thus eliminate all possibilities for a church to be built in Nowa Huta. The authorities hired some workers. They were all drunk and they started to remove the cross from the soil. First, the women who were there all day and night praying at the cross stood in defense of that cross. It became hectic and there were loud cries. Others came running in, the women's husbands and workers from the factory. At the same time, thousands of military cars drove onto the street, surrounding the city so that no one could enter, and the fighting began. When I came back from school, I was 10 years old then, I found out from my sister that our mum was on the church square, that there were some problems with the cross. I left my books at the house and went to meet my mum. It hit us like this. It was dark and a strange smell spread around. And then our eyes began to run immediately. Tear gas. So everyone began to wipe their eyes and we heard shots. And right after the shots, you could hear singing in the distance. We were singing, we want God in our books, schools and families. Beloved mother, then, God who defended Poland. And I said, let's go toward the singing. The number of wounded after these confrontations reached several hundreds. Some later became sick and died from their wounds. In the 20th century, I don't know if there was such an incident when workers of a socialist state stood in opposition to the authorities in defense of a cross. In defense of these people stood the auxiliary bishop of Krakow, Karol Wojtyła. He called for the residents of Nowohuta to calm down, to cease fighting, that he would begin talks with the authorities. It ended with a certain compromise. The clergy in Krakow's Curia replaced the administrative representative of Nowohuta, Father Satora, with a new priest, Father Gorzelani, who turned out to be very pragmatic and flexible. And through various behind-the-scenes negotiations, he was able to gain a new permission for building a church in a different location, but in Nowa Huta. It was in 1965. The Holy Father, Paul VI, invited Cardinal Wojtyła and myself for an audience. He asked to bring a stone from the grave of St. Peter, which he laid on my hands, saying, take this stone to Poland and build a church on it in Nowa Huta. I brought the stone to the Christmas Midnight Mass, which was all